Hello, my loves. Today we are going to read a really fun book from Germany. This lesson video is a little bit long because I have to read you the book and then we're really digging into how we should answer questions as readers because we are going to do that so much in first grade and soon you'll be able to do it independently. So if you need to pause this video at any point to take a stretch break, please do. I know how hard it is to sit, but I'm hoping you'll enjoy this book just as much as I do, and it will grab your attention and hold you in. Hello, travelers. Today we are visiting the country of Germany, which if you are watching this before writing, we're going to learn a lot about Germany during writing. In Germany, they love gingerbread houses and gingerbread men. That's where we got the idea in the United States. So I am going to read a fiction book about gingerbread. You might have heard this one before. It's called The Gingerbread Baby. Now, while we read today, we are going to have an essential question, which is a big question that we are going to work to answer using our first grade way of answering questions where we use wrap. I'm going to read you our question. So that question is fresh in your brain. And while I'm reading, you're going to look for the answer to that question and the proof of that. So our question is, how did the gingerbread baby feel about his house? Use details from the text to support your answer. So while I read, I want that fresh in your brain. I want you to think about how the gingerbread baby feels about his house. And remember, you have to tell me how he feels and use examples. So look really hard for those examples. And then we're going to work on the question together. Our book, The Gingerbread Baby by Jan Barrett. The Gingerbread Baby by Jan Barrett. My pages are stuck. Here's the title page. It was cold outside. It was warm inside. A fine day for gingerbread, Maddie thought. Maddie's mother put the big bowl on the table and lit the stove. Maddie took down a worn-looking cookbook with old-fashioned writing on the cover. He opened it up to the page that said, Gingerbread Boy. What I love about Jan Barrett is that she puts little hints in the side of what's to come. They measured and they mixed. Maddie rolled the dough into the shape of a gingerbread boy and they popped him in the oven. Bake a full eight minutes. No more, no less. Do not peek, the recipe read. Maddie listened to the, top, the clock. Tick tock, tick tock. One minute, two minutes, three, four, five. Maddie couldn't wait any longer. He opened the oven door to take a peek. Instead of a gingerbread boy, out jumped the gingerbread baby. He pranced around that big blue bowl. I'm the gingerbread baby, fresh from the pan. If you want me, catch me if you can. Maddie's mother reached for the gingerbread baby to put him back in the oven, but he ran all around the kitchen. The door opened and in came Maddie's father. What's that delicious smell? He asked as the gingerbread baby tumbled through his legs and outside into the yard. He ran by the tabby cat. She twitched her tail and sprang at him. They rumbled and they tumbled, but the gingerbread baby came out on top. He ran towards the garden. The dog caught a whiff of the tasty ginger and sniffed along behind him. But the gingerbread baby was halfway up when the dog caught him. He barked and he barked as the gingerbread baby climbed over the wall. Maddie was still inside. He heard his mother and father yelling. 
He heard a cat mewing and a dog barking, and he heard the gingerbread baby shouting, Catch me if you can. Maddie opens the worn-looking cookbook for the second time. Meanwhile, the gingerbread baby wheeled on down the path into the barn. The goats looked up as he somersaulted across their backs. The last one tried to catch him, but the gingerbread baby was much too fast. Martha and Madeline were standing by the well when the gingerbread baby stopped to take a drink. They looked at each other and winked. Martha started to talk to him while Madeline tiptoed behind him with the bucket. <laughs> but they couldn't fool that gingerbread baby. Look at Maddie. He took a braid from Martha and a braid from Madeline and tied them in a knot and ran down the road. Back in the house, Maddie stirred. He mixed and he rolled the dough. He shaped it, put the pan in the oven. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Eight long minutes. This time, he didn't peek. I will catch him if I can, Maddie said to himself. As he was bouncing along, the gingerbread baby saw a farm wagon just ahead. He jumped in and settled down for the ride next to Mama Pig. The smell of gingerbread was much too was too much for her. She tossed him high in the air, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. But the gingerbread baby twisted in the air and came down hard on that porky snout. I am the gingerbread baby, too quick for the mother and the father, too fast for the cat and the dog, the goats. Too clever for Martha and Madeline, too smart for the mama pig. Who's left? Catch me if you can. That gingerbread baby. Feeling smug, the gingerbread baby strolled along by himself until he came to a bridge that crossed over to the village. Just as he got to the middle, he heard running feet behind him and saw a crowd of villagers ahead of him. The gingerbread baby was trapped. He, the, he jumped onto the railing, backflipped through the air, and landed on a chunk of ice floating down the river. It's hard to see there, isn't it? He's falling into the river. That's the river. The ice bobbed along with the gingerbread baby dancing on top and singing in a loud voice. Look at me, what do you see? The best gingerbread baby ever! Until his feet got cold and he jumped ashore. Who was waiting him in the trees? It was the fox! He crept up behind the gingerbread baby, ready to eat him up. But the fox couldn't help himself. He licked his chops. Smack, smack. The gingerbread baby heard him and ran as fast as he could. Just when the fox was catching up, the gingerbread baby saw the milk and cheese man with his can of milk. The perfect hiding place, he thought. He lifted the lid and lowered himself inside. He was so pleased that he sang at the top of his gingerbread voice. Ha ha, hee hee, you'll never find me. I'm the gingerbread baby. Catch me if you can. The milk and the cheese man heard the gingerbread baby's voice. Who is meddling with my milk, he shouted and lifted the lid. But the gingerbread baby was ready. He jumped up and tweaked his nose. See him tweaking his nose? <clears throat> now. The milk and the cheese man, the fox, the villagers, the mama pig, Martha and Madeline, the bleeding goats, the barking dog, the meowing cat, and the father and mother were all after the gingerbread baby and getting closer. And he knew it. The brash baby was not as peppy and proud as he had been. He sniffed a familiar smell and followed his nose to the woods. He couldn't believe what he saw. 
There in the middle of a clearing was a gingerbread house, frosted with sugar, covered with candy, and doors with peppermint handles wide open. The gingerbread baby clapped his hands with glee and ran inside. In a tick-tock tick, everyone arrived at the clearing. But all they found were a few bits of frosting, peppermint candy, and some crumbs. The father exclaimed, the gingerbread baby has finally met his match. I wonder who it was, the mother said. Let's go home and tell Maddie. We know who it is. Maddie, his father said when they got home. We never did catch that gingerbread baby. All we found were some crumbs in the snow. I see you have been busy, his mother said, looking at the gingerbread house Maddie was holding. Too bad we never caught that gingerbread baby. Too bad, said Maddie. Only Maddie could hear the tiny voice from inside the gingerbread house. I'm the little gingerbread baby, lucky as can be, to be living in the house that Maddie made for me. The end. Alrighty. We need to look back at our essential question, that big question we need to answer. So... Let's read it again, like good readers do. It said, How did the gingerbread baby feel about his house? Use details from the text to support your answer. We are great first grader readers and writers, so we are going to use rap to answer this question. I know you've seen rap before, but I have a poster for rap that I want us to look at as we do it. All righty, I'm gonna swing over here. So our first R is for restating the question. So I am going to restate the question. In order to restate the question, I need to look at the question, which is this part because it has a question mark. How did the gingerbread baby feel about his house? Now, are there some important words in here that you think we will have to use when we are restating the question? What is this whole book about? The gingerbread baby. The gingerbread baby. So we're going to have to use that in our text. And what are we wondering about the gingerbread baby? Are we wondering if what color he is or... Um, where he went? No. We're wondering how he feels. Feels. What are we wondering how he feels about? His mom? No. His house. The house Maddie made for him. So those are going to have to be in our restating of the question because we're going to take our question and turn it into a statement which will have a period instead of a question mark. How did the gingerbread baby feel about his house? I can say the gingerbread baby felt. So the ginger Red, that's a long word. Baby, oh, that's a dot out. Baby felt. I'm gonna stop there. So I said, the gingerbread baby felt, and I'm going to see, I'm going to write how he felt. I still haven't used house, but I might be able to add that in later. So, I restated the question. Now I need to do A, which is answer the question. I have to write how he felt. So, I am going to look back in the text just like good readers do. 
Now, because it's how he felt about the house, I'm going to turn to the pages where there's the gingerbread baby and the house. So just looking at this picture, can you see on the gingerbread baby's face what it looks like? It says he couldn't believe what he saw. There in the middle of a clearing was a gingerbread house, frosted with sugar, covered with candy, and doors with peppermint handles. The gingerbread baby clapped his hands with glee and ran inside. And then there's another page at the very end that has that flap, I remember. It says, I'm the gingerbread baby, lucky as can be to be living in the house that Maddie made for me. Hmm. So given those two pages, and he knows everyone's chasing him, how do you think the gingerbread baby felt? Ooh, happy is a good one. But now that we're at almost at the middle of first grade, can we think of a juicier word than happy? Ooh, lucky. It says that he's lucky. He felt lucky. And here you can feel lucky. I think he is so excited. So I'm going to write that he felt excited. The gingerbread baby felt excited. And then I can almost add about his house. About his house. Period. All right. I think I did RNA and wrote my first sentence. I'm going to double check and proofread my sentence like good writers do. The gingerbread baby felt excited about his house. All right, I did it. I restated the question and I answered the question. Now I need to prove my answer with text evidence two times. And I can find proof in the pictures or in the words. So, but I need to find two proofs. How many proofs? Two proofs. I always say two or more. So it could be two. Could it be five? Yeah, that would be a whole lot of proof. Um, but two or more. So going back to that first picture where he sees that gingerbread house, I see in the picture that he looks happy. And I also see in the words that it says he clapped his hands with glee and he ran inside. Would you run inside of a house if you didn't want to be there? No. And it also says he couldn't believe what he saw. So that could be a good thing too. Look at all the evidence we found just on one page. He looks happy. He clapped his hands with glee. He ran inside and he couldn't believe what he saw. And then I'm going to go to this. And it looks like he's singing and dancing. When I'm singing and dancing, I know I'm excited. So that picture shows him dancing with a smile. So that's another proof. And then it says that the gingerbread baby says he's as lucky as can be. And so, so that is another proof. So the proof that we have that he felt excited is that he ran into the house. He clapped his hands with glee. He looks happy. In another picture, he looks like he's dancing and singing. That means you're excited usually. And he says how lucky he is. So that was a lot of proof. That was more than two proofs. So your job now is to go into your Holidays Around the World book. And you're going to turn to this page and it actually says the gingerbread baby at the top. And it says Germany because that's where this book takes place actually. So you are going to answer this question, which is the same question I have on the board. I already helped you with your R and A and we talked about our proof. Today, we're going to see what you can do independently proving your answer in another sentence or sentences. So, you are going to do the full wrap here. I always say 
to write wrap. And then after you write everything, I go back and check it. I'm like, oh, yep, I restated my question. Check. Did I answer my question? Yep. Check. Prove it twice. Yep. Check. Check. So you are going to answer that question down below and then you can sketch and color an illustration that matches it. All right, my wonderful readers and writers, you go ahead and get started. I hope that I helped get your brains ready for this question. See you later.